The image you see before you tore my friend group apart. The simple picture of a towering giant over a forest and the caption, is Paul Bunyan a kaiju? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just Brandon, and today I'm going to shed some light on this mystery and definitively answer this age-old question. Let's start off by figuring out what a kaiju is. Kaiju is a Japanese word that translates literally to strange beast. Originally, this word was used to refer to creatures of legend, but it took on a modern definition in 1954 when the first kaiju film was released in Japan, and the king of the monsters began his reign. Following the release of the original Godzilla, kaiju would come to refer to a non-human creature that pushed beyond the limits of nature and displayed divine power. Most mainstream kaiju are incredibly large, often hundreds of feet tall, but size is not actually a determining factor in if something is a kaiju or not. The creators of Godzilla and the kaiju film craze have been quoted as saying that kaiju is more than merely big animals. It's the use of special abilities or powers that start pushing a creature into kaiju territory. Also, kaiju often serve as metaphors for various current events. Popular examples of kaiju are Godzilla and Rodan, both of which are large reptilian creatures with nuclear breath attacks that both represent the destructiveness of real-life nuclear weapons. Now let's take a look at Paul Bunyan. In the mid-1800s, legend began spreading of Paul Bunyan, a giant, mainly humanoid, standing roughly 200 feet tall, who roamed the North American countryside with his companion, Babe, the equally large blue ox. From birth, Paul was enormous, requiring five fully grown storks to carry him to his parents in Maine. As a baby, he required dozens of barrels of food and milk every day, otherwise the rumbling of his stomach would cause small earthquakes, and if he ever went out into the oceans around him, his splashing would create waves large enough to sink ships. Before too long, his parents moved him to the deep, unsettled wilderness of the north where he could exist without accidentally hurting others. Surrounded by trees, he became a logger, and with his immense strength, he was able to clear an entire acre of woods in just one swing. Then, one fateful winter, when it was so cold that the snow itself turned blue, Paul ventured into the wilderness and stumbled on an ox calf, cold, alone, and blue from the falling snow. Paul rescued the calf, named him Babe, and nursed him back to health, but even as he regained his strength, his hide and coat were permanently stained blue from that coldest of winters. As Babe grew up in Paul's care, he grew bigger and bigger, until eventually he was just as massive himself. This is where the legend of Paul Bunyan and Babe the Blue Ox really takes form. Once fully grown, Paul and Babe traveled the lands of North America, shaping the landscape at their will. Being a logger at heart, Paul would devote time to clearing the vast unexplored forests, and Babe would carry the timber to and fro across the country. The pair are entirely responsible for the deforestation of the area that would become the Dakotas, and in their free time they would create some of the most well-known landmarks in the United States. By dragging his axe across the ground as he walked Arizona, Paul created the Grand Canyon. His and Babe's footprints through the wetlands of Minnesota would fill with water and form the 10,000 lakes. He dug several waterways, including the Missouri River and the Puget Sound, to ship his lumber, and also Lake Michigan as a watering hole for Babe. To shower, Paul shaped the Yellowstone waterfalls, and the Mississippi River was created by accident when Babe accidentally dropped a bucket of water he was carrying. One day, Paul and Babe were playing together, and the force of their roughhousing crumbled the stone beneath them as they collided with it and each other, ultimately forming the Grand Teton mountain range. And when Babe's time would finally come, his burial mound would become known as the Black Hills of current-day South Dakota. Outliving his best friend, and with so much forest cleared that towns could spread across the land, Paul decided it was time to retire. He traveled northwest and eventually settled in the wilderness of Alaska. It's unclear what he's doing today, but we do know that he's still with us somewhere, as every night the moonlight bounces off his trusty axe and dances in the night sky. So now that we know who Paul Bunyan is, and we know what a kaiju is, it's time to compare and contrast the two. Let's take a look at what it means to be a kaiju and see if the story of Paul Bunyan fits the criteria. First, let's go ahead and get the issue of size out of the way. To reiterate, size isn't technically a defining quality of kaiju, but it does help in the eyes of the mainstream, and it's pretty easy to analyze. At roughly 200 feet tall, Paul Bunyan is significantly taller than the original iteration of Godzilla, who stands at roughly 165 feet tall. Next, kaiju have to be living organisms, but can't be human. This rule is pretty concrete, and Paul kinda looks human. So is that it? Is this the end of the discussion? No. Here's the thing. The vast majority of descriptions I've found of Paul Bunyan talk of him being human-like or humanoid, specifically, but not human. 
We know that Paul was gigantic right from the very beginning, as opposed to being normal size and growing, so it would make a lot of sense that Paul isn't human at all, but is actually a member of the giant race, a race of large, human-looking creatures dating back hundreds of years ago. Plus, if you'll allow me to go even nuttier than we already are, it's actually canon that the storks who brought Paul to his home came from across the Atlantic Ocean from the direction of Europe and Scandinavia, hubs of giant lore. I'm just saying, it's possible that there was a mix-up, that Paul wasn't even supposed to be in America, and that some human child got raised by giant parents, all by mistake. Anyway, is Paul Bunyan a human? Almost assuredly not, so we're still on track to Kaiju Town. Moving on, let's group points 3 and 4 together. Kaiju originally referred to creatures of legend, and even now are often based on creatures of legend, and they are often representative of larger issues in the world. Paul Bunyan is one of the first true American legends, and based on his character, most likely had similar origins to the impossibly great heroes of other cultures. He is also largely representative of colonization in the Americas, for better or worse. You could interpret Paul Bunyan as someone forging their own path and living the American dream, or as a foreign savior of society in this wild land, or even as someone forced from their home because of towns and cities spreading across the country and taking over the wilderness. All in all, I'd say this is easily another step in the right direction. Finally, we have one last point of contention, and it's a big one. Kaiju need to have some trait, ability, or power that pushes them beyond the limits of nature and into the realm of the divine. First off, we need to clarify one thing. The word divine means very different things to different cultures. I won't claim to be an expert on Japanese religion, but to my understanding, the point here is that Kaiju needs to be comparable to the Shinto gods. Shinto is a polytheistic religion that recognizes a host of specialized deities rather than one almighty god. This means that a god might have absolute control over one aspect of life, but no control over others. They tend to have human characteristics or emotions, and they can be killed by other gods or sometimes even humans. The point here is that being considered divine in this case is more about being supernatural and impactful on the world rather than being all-powerful or all-knowing. Take Godzilla as a prime example. He is a force of nature, changing the world to the point that he has transcended what it means to be an individual. So, does Paul Bunyan fit within this description? Well, looking back at his exploits, I'd say it's pretty easy to see that he also is a force of nature. In a lot of ways, I really think he would fit in as a polytheistic god. He has his specialties, like terrain and the wilderness in general, which he has the power to bend and shave at his will, and he uses these gifts to cause change on the world. So as far as I'm concerned, I definitely say Paul fits the divine bill. But, some of my friends have been adamant that he needs to have some kind of traditional power or ability to count as a kaiju. So let's address that. I think there's two possible arguments here. First, if Paul Bunyan truly is of the giant race, which I think is pretty concrete at this point, then he probably has an affinity with the elements of earth or ice like is common in giant lore. I think Earth Affinity makes the most sense here as it would help explain his unrealistic feats of literally changing the landscape, but Ice Affinity would make sense too, considering that he canonically went out into a winter so cold it froze sound and came back like it was nothing. Oh yeah, did I mention that? The winter with blue snow was so cold that sounds would freeze before they could be heard. But considering that there aren't really any reports of Paul performing any traditional Earth or Ice bending, let's drop that for now and move on to point two. Paul Bunyan has incredible super strength. Even at his size, assuming he has natural giant strength, the feats he can perform are astounding. He has literally moved mountains and rivers. I thought about trying to do a fun segment where I tried to use math to calculate just how strong he is, but honestly, I don't need to. Take a look at this fight scene between Godzilla and King Kong from the newest MonsterVerse movie, and take note that in this series, both of these two are well over 300 feet tall. A handful of buildings are getting toppled over by the force of the fight, but most of them aren't. Several of these buildings are getting hit directly by these kaiju, and some of them are getting hit by the axe, specifically, and they're kinda just taking those hits. Paul Bunyan and Babe were just play fighting, just playing together, and the force of their roughhousing was so great that they actually destroyed the earth beneath them, to the point that they created a new mountain range. What Paul Bunyan can do by accident while he's playing far exceeds what King Kong and Godzilla are doing to each other in an actual fight. It's not even close. In my opinion, this easily pushes Paul Bunyan into divine territory. But no, apparently, just being strong isn't good enough of a power for some people. So is that it? Is this the end? Is there really nothing else we can say? Well, actually, there is. 
Paul Bunyan has a secret ability, one he hides in plain sight. Rewind the tape! As Babe grew up in Paul's care, he grew bigger and bigger, until eventually he was just as massive himself. Bigger and bigger. Bigger and bigger. Just as massive himself. Paul is a giant, but what about Babe? He was just a normal ox, so how did he get so big? It was because of Paul's real superpower. The ability to make things grow big. It's often overlooked, but it is canon that any animal Paul looks after will grow to insane size, just like himself. There are multiple cases of this happening, but the most notable, after Babe of course, is Bessie the Yeller Cow. Bessie was just a normal cow that Paul bought and raised, and she grew massive enough to become Babe's mate. Being able to change something size like this is well beyond natural ability, so I think this case is closed. So let's recap. Paul Bunyan is a large, non-human being rooted in legend, a legend in his own right, and a metaphor for change and expansion. He has super strength, he might be able to control earth or ice, and he can control the size of animals. So is Paul Bunyan a kaiju? Yes! 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we have cracked the case. We have solved the mystery. We now know definitively, without a doubt and beyond question, that Paul Bunyan is, in fact, a kaiju. This may be the greatest accomplishment of my entire life. Everyone who stuck through to the end, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments why you agree with me, and remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next scientific breakthrough. I've been Just Brandon, and I will catch you in the next one.